of the Bolo. Welcome to the first of the Competition Portal tutorial series. In this tutorial, we're going through the logging in process and how to add members from your club database into a pennant team. We're starting on the Competition Portal homepage. Uh, there are two ways you can log in to put players into teams. Uh, the first we're going to show you is the general way, which most clubs I think use. Uh, so on the left hand side, we've got all the clubs there. You can scroll to your club, whichever club that is, down to Yokine at the end, all alphabetical, of course. For today's purposes, we're going to use the Cambridge Bowling Club. And while it's bringing up the area where we'll, we'll be putting the username and password, if you don't know your username and password, please contact your club secretary, they should know it. If not, uh, give Bowls WA a ring or an email and we will try and sort it out for you. So we'll put in the password of the club. So it's And there's the username and the password. And it will think about logging us in. As you can see, we've done it incorrectly. So it hasn't logged us in, so the username and password are incorrect, so we have to try again. Now if that happens to you, again, either try again if you think you've just made a mistake. Um, but if it's wrong and you can't log in, then please contact us and we can reset it for you. So try again, hopefully with the right password. And there we go, we're logged in, currently logged in, it tells us as the Cambridge Bowling Club Administrator. So we know, we know we can actually log into our pennant teams. So again, there's a couple of ways. We can either scroll down to the actual competition we're looking for, the men's Saturday, women's Saturday, women's Tuesday, men's midweek, and of course, women's Friday night pennant. They'll all be there for the new season. So you either pick the one you want, or you can bypass that and just search for the competition you want and it'll eliminate all the others. So the women's Tuesday. For today's purposes, we actually want the demo training tutorial, and we'll be going into the men's midweek second division demo. So that'll take us into all the second division fixtures. Click, there we go. So all the colours obviously will be here, second division for the men, uh, red, white, blue, and of course gold. The computer gives them to you in alphabetical order, so blue is of course on the top, so you will have to go to the colour that you want. With the drop down menu, we will go to second division red today. And the fixtures are there, and we will call so Cambridge, playing South Perth. We go to the pencil of that fixture where it says enter results, which also is enter teams. And we click on the pencil. So that will take us to the fixture. This is where we would put all the results in, which we will go through in another tutorial. If we were the away team, if we were logging in as South Perth, we actually wouldn't see any of this. It would just be this yellow part here of results and scores due Sunday the 2nd of September because South Perth can't put the, t the scores in as the away team. Today for the putting in the teams we're going to go into the team tab. Again if we had played previous games already, if Cambridge team had already played we would be able to just copy a previous team, we can't do that today. We'll do that again in another tutorial. But we're going to set our team up from scratch. So we're going to players tab, we've got the team roles tab, which is irrelevant for our purposes. And we're going to go into the members tab. This will take us into all the members, the database of Cambridge. 
So all players are there. If you have a player that you are selecting who isn't there, uh, that means they either haven't been added as a new member or they haven't been transferred correctly from another club if they've come from another club. So please, again, contact your secretary and tell them the name that is missing and they will either go through the process of adding that member or they'll contact us to see what's happened and why they're not there. But this database is obviously, of course, controlled by your club. Uh, so anyone missing, uh, your club secretary or whoever looks after your database, it may not be your secretary, uh, should know how to access it and have a look. So this is a men's midweek competition. So it's a three-ring competition. So we require 12 players. As you can see by the cursor, currently the player count is zero. There's nobody added. And the minimum number required is nine which of course is three rinks with one less player because you can play a player short, but you need to have at least nine. So we're gonna add players uh, just at random really by pushing onto the addition symbol when we add them. They will pop up onto the right hand side to show you that they're in the team. So we're just gonna go down and add some players Of course, you may have to look at them, but the database is in alphabetical order. So it's not too difficult. Of course, we've added, uh, I think that's five players now. If we have a look at the player count, it tells us we've added five players. So we know how many we've added. So we're just going to keep adding. Six, seven, eight, nine so if we were playing short that up here the minimum number is gone because we've reached nine but we have a full team so that's 10 11 and 12. the national computer will not allow us to actually pick any more than 12 because the addition signs disappeared maximum number has been reached so if this was the team but you have a look at it and you've made a mistake you can just pull somebody out by going to the subtraction and then adding the correct person by the addition. So they're the players. And again, the computer has put them in alphabetical order so you can see where they come from. They're not in there how you add them. However, so while we've got our players, we need to put them into rinks. To put them in the rinks, we go back to the players tab. Three tabs, go back to the players tab. There they are. And they're in the order that you put them in. So if you put them in the correct rink order that you have on your sheet, that's how they'll come out. You won't have to make any changes. If you don't have to make any changes, you've got this save player positions button just on the right hand side. We'll click that, and up the top of your screen, players successfully saved. If you don't see that, your players haven't been saved correctly. But maybe there's a late change, or maybe the selectors have changed their mind and they want to switch players. So we can pick up by pressing and holding, holding the key and moving him down, and we can switch him with somebody. Whoever you switch him with goes directly into the position that that person came from. So if they're changing, not necessarily, if there's a three-way change or something, you may have to uh, move by holding and then moving them. Once you've done that, again, do not leave the screen until you've pushed the save player positions. Because when you leave and you haven't saved, it will just go back to where it started originally from. So it'll go back and so again, we'll save player positions. It'll give a bit of a blank and then it'll come back on and then your rinks are saved. And there they are. And in putting your teams in, that's all you have to do. You can print your team sheet out. You can order the sh to whatever column. If your uh, printer's connected, and that's the end. There's nothing you don't need to do anything more until after the fixture, and that'll be another tutorial. However, as I said, there were two ways that you could do it. 
just going to quickly go through the second way. This, uh, how you put the players in is exactly the same as how you log in is the difference. So we're going to go back to the competition's homepage by clicking on the tab at the top, which will take us directly to competitions. Okay, so we're back into competitions, all are there. We will log out as Cambridge. So we're back at the start. We're no longer logged in as anybody. So if we come into here and we're going to do it the second way, we can give passwords and usernames, individual passwords and usernames to teams. This is especially helpful and it is actually required if you have two teams in the same colour in the same division because they will need separate passwords and they will need separate usernames but if you wanted to do that for all your teams to give them separate ones and you don't log in on the uh, left hand side there anymore you'd go directly to your competition which again is men's midweek third second division demo this time we will go into second division gold we're still Cambridge. This time we put the away team. We're playing Osborne Park. We'll go to the pencil. And instead of going to the match and team screens, it will take us to this login. Now I've given this Cambridge team its own individual login. So I'll give it the username, and the password, and I log in. And it says, as I said before, as the away team, you don't see any of the match details because you can't put the scores in. So it doesn't allow you to see that. We'll go to the team tab. Players, again, if we had previous teams, we could just copy and paste them straight in. We don't. Members, and there's the Cambridge database. And you go through the whole process again. So you can give your teams individual Usernames and passwords if you want. If you have multiple people doing the uh, checking in, if you have managers of each particular team adding the teams and you just want them to have access to that particular team, you can give them individual usernames and passwords. You just need to contact us at Bowles WA, the Aaron Delaport or Peter Harris, and, and we can do them for you. Preferably by email so you can write your passwords and usernames down so we can just transcribe them straight and we don't get them wrong. So that is the end of the first tutorial. If you have any questions, please contact Bowles WA and we'll be happy to answer them.